Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I'm so happy to meet you again in this very important project. In these lectures, you will know four important steps you need to do if you suspect cardiogenic shock to avoid missing life-threatening diagnosis. A 38-year-old obese diabetic smoker male patient was admitted to the CCU of our hospital because of acute coronary syndrome due to critical lesion of left anterior descending coronary artery. He has undergone reperfusion with drug eluting stent of the left anterior descending. Uh, after cardiac catheterization, the patient developed shock with blood pressure 70 over 50, heart rate 130 per minute, sinus. We have been consulted. Patient was sweaty, pale, with cold extremities, and uric, but still conscious and complain of severe left lumbar abdominal pain. I believe it's not a rare scenario. While we are resuscitating the patient, we started critical care echo. And as you all of you know, I, use, I, I prefer to start with the inferior vena cava to get a quick idea about what's going on. Unfortunately, in this patient, inferior vena cava is not visualized even from the uh, hepatic view because the patient is uh, morbid obese and huge fatty liver, a lot of gases. In this situation, and I always talk about that in my courses, uh, you need another big vein to get an idea about systemic pressures and volume status. Uh, the, the accessible big vein, central vein, you need to uh, go to in this situation is the internal jugular vein because internal jugular vein is big vein and at the same time accessible vein. Uh, we went to the right internal jugular. This is the right carotid and this is the right internal jugular. It is completely collapsed. That means it gives us an idea about the systemic pressure severe vena cava because internal jugular uh, vein will go to severe vena cava. So this is very important to be considered in a shocked patient. I went to the heart. This is the four chamber view. As you see, there is a very poor ejection fraction. For me, the ejection fraction is almost 10 to 15 percent. The lateral wall is hypokinetic. The apex and the septum, inferior septum, is totally akinetic. And there is also two important signs to look for here. You see the turbid flow of blood inside the ventricle, denoting very low flow state and the poor ejection fraction, and the left atrium is not dilated despite this poor left ventricular function. Another view, the two-chamber view, the anterior wall is almost akinetic, and there is severe hypokinesia with the inferior wall, and also there is turbid flow inside the ventricle and small left atrium. What else? You should assess the right side. Right ventricle diameter is 2.6, and the diameter is normal, not dilated. And the TAPSI is low, it's 1.27, normal 1.7. That means there is also right ventricular dysfunction in this patient and the left, severe left ventricular dysfunction. Okay, now you have a patient with severe left ventricular failure and right ventricular dysfunction and shock. I need you to go for these four steps sequentially to not missing any life-threatening disease. First, assess left atrial pressure. In this patient with severe left ventricular failure and right ventricular dysfunction, I will expect the left atrial pressure to be high. Uh, but uh, I need to assess is it real or not. So how can I assess left atrial pressure? Thanks to the American Society of Echocardiography and the European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging for the new diastolic guideline. If your patient have uh, left ventricular disease, like our patient, severe akinesia and, and, and the low ejection fraction, you will put the pulsed wave doubler at the tip of mitral valve and you will assess the E over A ratio. E is a passive feeling of the left ventricle from left atrium at early diastole, and the A is the atrial kick at the end of diastole. So, if the E over A is more than or equal to, 
That means if there is increased liptator pressure and the grade 3 diastolic dysfunction, and this be straight away cardiogenic shock because uh, you expect in this severe left atrial failure to have increased left atrial pressure. Okay. What if the E over A ratio is less than or equal 0.8 and the E wave is small, is less than or equal 50 centimeters per second? Like our patient, E over A is 0.49 and the E is 38 centimeters per second. This is the same scenario here. Okay. In this situation, you have grade 1 diastolic dysfunction and normal left atrial pressure. And if you have a normal left atrial pressure in patient with heart failure, you need to rethink. If you have collapsed internal jugular vein in a patient with severe heart failure, you should uh, rethink what's going on, what else uh, besides the cardiac issue. Second, you need to know if you see a left ventricular failure, is it acute or chronic heart failure? Because is it acute, the patient has no time to compensate and you will expect very high left atrial pressure. But if it's chronic heart failure, there will be remodeling and the patient has time to compensate in this situation. So, thanks to the American Society of Echocardiography guidelines of chamber quantification, it mentioned very clearly that the diastolic dimension of left ventricle in males, it ranges from 4.2 to 5.8. In our patient, in the diastolic diameter, is 4.9, it's less than 5.8. That means this patient has normal left atrial in the diastolic diameter and is going with acute left ventricular failure. Third, if acute, you should exclude any valve lesion because valve lesion may be a hidden, reversible, fatal cause. In our patient, the color didn't reveal any significant mitral regurg or aortic regurg in this patient. Fourth, you need to know the baseline stroke volume or at least the baseline of left ventricular outflow tract, VTI, which is the surrogate of stroke volume. Because this baseline, you will uh, follow up to uh, look for any uh, improvement. I will put pulsed wave Doppler at the left ventricular flow tract, and I will trace this Doppler, Doppler flow from the left ventricular flow tract, which is the left ventricular flow tract velocity type integral of VTI. It's the normal from 18 to 22 centimeter. In our patient, it's 6.6 .6 centimeter. It's very low. That means our patient has very low uh, stroke volume or LVOT VTI. Okay. This is the four steps you need in sequential to do if you see the patient with heart failure and shock. Okay, critical care equal diagnosis. You will now put, after these four steps, you will put the full diagnosis in front of your eye because this will uh, determine your management. The full diagnosis, critical care equal diagnosis, is acute severe by ventricular failure with ejection fraction almost 10% by uh, visual assessment and very low stroke volume, LVOT VTI 6.6 .6 centimeter, no significant valve lesion, collapsed in internal jugular vein and the normal or low lift atrial pressure and the grade, grade one that's all dysfunction. So our patient pictures of the critical care echo is not a straight away cardiogenic shock and definitely there is another element decreasing the systemic pressure and decreasing the lift atrial pressure. Critical care equal guided management. You need to give enotropes because there is very bad ejection fraction. And in our patient, uh, you need to give IV fluids because the patient has signs of decreased uh, systemic pressure and left atrial pressure. And you need to give fluids, watched fluids, targeted fluids. I gave for the patient one liter of normal saline and three units of packet red blood cell was giving at the scene. And because of dropping of hemoglobin, we expect the hemorrhagic shock because of uh, after catheterization and uh, dual antiplatelet and heparin injection. So we give portamine sulfate IV, was given to reverse heparin effect because of dropping hemoglobin. We expect uh, the cause of this uh, dropping systemic pressure and left atrial pressure in patients with cardiac uh, disease. Uh, after cardiac catheterization, we expect hemorrhage going on and because of dropping hemoglobin. Patient was stabilized by IV fluids and the inotropes, and the next day, the 
lateral wall is contracting normally and akinesia improved in the septum and two chamber view the inferior wall hypokinesia improved we give hypofluid guided by increase of stroke volume and no critical increase in left atrial pressure. So we are targeted the stroke volume and definite the lung water in this patient. Uh, all the way there was an A line. And at the same time, we need to perfuse our patient to give fluids in our patient. But at the same time, we don't need to give it too much. We need to give fluids but we need to not give it too much to lead to pulmonary congestion. This is the hallmark of management, uh, hemodynamic management of heart failure. So you are following the stroke volume and be sure it's increasing and the patient still fluid responsiveness by VTI. And at the same time, you are following left atrial pressures because you don't need to go too high to cause pulmonary congestion. As you see next day, the E wave increased, became now as long as the A wave. It increased from 38 to 57 centimeter per second, but still not any restrictive battery is present. And at the same time, when I checked next day, the left atrial pressure, uh, the E over A is 0.9. So I need to do three parameters. First, E over E prime, lateral E prime here was 8 centimeter, and E over E lateral, lateral E prime, it's 11.6. To be a positive point in the direction of the solid function and lift atrial pressure increase, it should be more than 13, so it's negative point. And do not try cuspid regurg to get any velocity, negative point, and also lift atrial volume is 41, which is negative point. So I have three, still have three uh, negative point, and if I have three negative point here, E over E not normal and the tricuspid regurg is not increased, left atrial volume index not increased. So it is normal if I have two or three of this negative. So I have normal, two negative, normal left atrial pressure grade one, the source function. So I still have normal left atrial pressure and no uh, increase uh, in left atrial pressure despite giving one liter crystalloid and three units of packed red blood cell. And uh, lung uh, definite there was a lines all over. Uh, after stabilization, we went to CT. We found huge retrobotomial hematoma, huge left side retrobotomial hematoma causing severe hemorrhagic shock as well as severe cardiac stunning and cardiogenic shock. And really, this is not a rare scenario because during cardiac catheterization, you need arterial femoral access. And if you do it blindly, you may injure the posterior wall of the femoral artery or external iliac artery and by giving dual antiplatelet and anticoagulant, it's very easy to bleed the retroboutineal and cause this huge hematoma, which will affect the management of your patient and the, uh, worse the prognosis. So, it is better to do it under ultrasound guide, especially in plain longitudinal approach. So, you can insert the needle immediately in the center of femoral artery and you will not injure the posterior wall and you will avoid very bad and not rare complication really. And thank you for appreciated listening and uh, to continue our talk, we will teach you in our seventh basic critical care ultrasound course, which will be held in Giza Medical Syndicate uh, at 26th and 25th of December, we will teach you how to do this vascular access by ultrasound, longitudinal approach, and you will insert the needle under ultrasound guide, visual approach uh, on simulators on phantom, and at the same time, you will know how to localize all central and arterial lines on volunteer. This will be one important station in our course. At the same time, we will teach you most of the important points of the basic critical care ultrasound. You will know 
the basic applied physics and the machine biology. You will do have to do complete lung ultrasound examination by high frequency and low frequency probe. How to do the pragmatic assessment for excursion and uh, sickening. How to measure IV secular stability. How to do basic echo assess left ventricle, right ventricle, uh, search for pericardial tamponade. You will know about shock protocol and we'll add on in this course another station which is a focused uh, compression test to diagnose DVT in bedside in your patient with very high sensitivity and specificity, 95%. And this is very important skill for intensivists. See you all in the uh, our course next uh, uh, course in the uh, Giza Medical Syndicate. And to reserve a, a place, you need to uh, dial this number. You need to contact Dr. Adoa, the scientific coordinator, on WhatsApp on this number. And see you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.